What's up travel friends? It's Stoof here from Travel Season and this video describes our experience at Dry Tortugas National Park located in Florida. This national park is 70 miles west of Key West in Florida so it's not a very accessible national park so very few people visit this park. If you're planning your own trip to Dry Tortugas then this video is going to be very helpful so keep watching. The night before our National Park Day, we spent the evening in Key West, walked around, visited some shops, and then went to bed early so that we could wake up bright and early for our seaplane ride to Dry Tortugas National Park. Good morning! We're on our way to Key West International Airport for our seaplane ride to Dry Tortugas National Park. So there are two major ways to access Dry Tortugas National Park. Number one is the seaplane ride, which we decided to do. Number two would be to take the ferry. Both of these options are expensive. This is not a cheap park to visit. Uh, we saved up for the seaplane ride because we thought it was gonna be awesome and we were not disappointed. Definitely recommend the seaplane ride. Below this video in the description section, you'll see a link to the ferry website and the seaplane website. So you guys can look at both of those options for yourselves. But the seaplane ride was fantastic. You arrive about an hour prior to your flight. They'll brief you on the flight information and then you walk over to the seaplane, climb on in and you have your own window. You put the headset on and you can listen to music. It blocks out all of the noise and you can listen to the pilot explaining things as you fly over shipwrecks or see sharks or turtles in the water. Super cool experience. It's about a 35 to 40 minute plane ride to the island. You get an awesome aerial view of Dry Tortugas, the Fort Jefferson as you're approaching and then your seaplane lands on the water and comes right up to the beach and you just step off the plane onto the sand and you made it to Dry Tortugas. One of the best things about the seaplane ride is that the seaplane ride is only 40 minutes and the ferry ride is closer to two and a half hours of travel time and they both leave around the same time. So if you take the seaplane, you have two hours of extra time on this island before the ferry full of people arrives on the island. And it's not like the ferry full of people is that many people because even when they got there, we didn't feel crowded at all. But it's really nice when there are only 10 other people on this island looking at things. <laughs> you have the beach to yourself. There's the boat. All YouTube friends, the seaplane is definitely the way to go. We've been here for a while now, settled in, got our spot board the whole place and the boat is just arriving so the seaplane's the way to go if you don't have your own boat another couple benefits of taking the seaplane is that the seaplane will provide you with a cooler they'll put it on the plane for you and then whenever the plane lands the pilot will hand you your cooler with your number on it and then you'll just take it to the beach and let it sit on the beach all day. Uh, because so few people visit this park, there's very few incidents of theft, so you don't really have to worry about that with leaving your things on the beach. Another thing that the seaplane provides you with is snorkel gear included in your price. So when you get to the seaplane office, they will show you a map and the map of the island shows you the fort and then there are two beaches you can choose from. The pilot will give you a recommendation for which beach will have better conditions based on his observation as he flew you to the island. When he landed he recommended that we go to the south beach if we wanted to avoid stronger winds and currents so most of us just got our coolers as soon as we got off the plane and walked over to the south beach, dropped off our coolers, and then we could explore the fort. So 
So we walked around the fort, explored the moat areas, went inside Fort Jefferson, walked up on top of those uh, big walls of the fort, and we learned a lot about the history. So I'm going to read you guys some of the information that we learned. So this national park is called Dry Tortugas. Originally, this place was named Las Tortugas because of the sea turtles that were seen, and then it was changed to Dry Tortugas to let everyone know that this is a dry island, meaning no fresh water is available on this island. Fort Jefferson's construction started on Garden Key, which is this island, in 1846 and went on for 30 years, but they never actually finished this whole entire fort. During the Civil War, the fort served as a Union military prison for captured deserters. It also held four men convicted of complicity in President Abraham Lincoln's assassination in 1865. We actually walked through the fort and they have a section where Samuel Mudd's prison quarters are. And it was a pretty spacious prison quarter with some pretty nice views. Not a bad place to be imprisoned. So the fort was abandoned in 1874. In 1908, this area became a wildlife refuge to protect the Sooty Turn Rookery from egg collectors. It was a national monument in 1935, and then in 1992, it became a national park, and they turned it into a national park to protect the scenic, cultural, marine, and scientific values for education and inspiration of the public. Quote from the Dry Tortugas National Park map. So Dry Tortugas National Park actually consists of seven different keys or little islands, but not all of these keys are open to the public. You actually can only visit three of them, I guess. You can visit Garden Key, that's where the boat and the ferry takes you. Sometimes you can visit Bush Key. We did because the land bridge was there. Sometimes sediment washes away access to Bush Key, uh, so it's not easy to get to on foot. And then the other key you can get to is Loggerhead Key, but we could not access that because we did not have our own boat or a kayak to get us over there. We were stuck to Garden Key, but there's enough to see a Garden Key for a full day. If you do have your own private boat to access Dry Tortugas, then you can visit the other islands. Just make sure you get your boating permit before you come. And I definitely think you should check out Loggerhead Key if you have your own boat. It looks like there's some really nice snorkeling and scuba in that area, and there's a lighthouse on that island as well. As I mentioned before, this island and national park are rarely crowded, which was really a nice park experience. I wish more national parks were like that, but I understand why they can't be. <laughs> it was nice to walk around the fort and just kind of feel like we had it to ourselves just walking around reading the plaques that describe the history, uh, some more information about the research that's been done there, the different animal and plant species. Uh, you really have to do the learning and the exploring for yourself, which what we really enjoyed. This national park does not have a restaurant on the island. There's no food or beverage on the actual island. And there are restrooms though. Uh, they are located outside close to the South Beach and you can only access those restrooms when the ferry is not docked. When the ferry is docked, then you have access to some snacks, adult beverages, water, and restrooms with flush toilets. There also are no trash cans on this island. Everything is pack in, pack out, so keep that in mind when you're planning your national park trip here bring a baggie just to put your trash in so that you can pack it out when you leave. So to give you guys the breakdown of our daily itinerary, 
We arrived at the Key West International Airport around 7.30 a.m. We were briefed on our flight, received our coolers, and packed up our goodies, got on the airplane, and left at 8 o'clock in the morning. We arrived at Dry Tortugas around 8.40 a.m. We got off the plane, walked over to the beach, set our cooler down, set down our beach towels, and then we took the tour around the Fort Jefferson area for about an hour uh, until around 10 a.m. We came back to the beach area and saw that the ferry was approaching. Uh, then we just relaxed at the beach for a little bit. We did some snorkeling for about another hour or two and just hung out, ate our lunches that we packed in, uh, went over to check out the ferry, use the restrooms at the ferry. We noticed that they had a uh, happy hour, I guess, started at like 1.30 p.m. So we uh, grabbed some beverages there and just hung out for a bit. Then we walked over to Bush Key and it's just about a one mile out and back uh, walk along the beach. Just on that little strip of land, you can get closer to the nesting birds, but you can't quite get to Long Key where all the birds are nesting. Uh, there's a sign there that just says, do not enter. Uh, so we just got up to that sign and turned around walked back along the beach and once we made it back to our beach spot we relaxed for a little bit longer and then it was about time to head back to the seaplane. So with the seaplane you can have either a half day or a full day trip. We did the full day trip so we had about six hours of time on the island and then we got back on the airplane and we flew back to Key West and we were basically back in our vehicle around four 4 15 p.m. so we had time to grab some dinner and head back to our RV resort located about an hour and a half north of Key West. Overall it was an incredible day thanks to the seaplane that was an unforgettable experience being at the park was wonderful the water was calm even though it's a little windy once you get on top of the fort there you still have some magnificent views all around you it would have been neat to see the lighthouse it was under construction when we were there um, on Garden Key, but that just means we'll have to come back someday. Because Dry Tortugas National Park is one of the least visited national parks, I think it's well preserved more than some areas of other national parks that get a lot of foot traffic. Uh, this national park has so much history in Fort Jefferson. There's also such an abundance of marine life, which makes this a great place to snorkel and scuba dive. It's also a wonderful place for bird watching with the various species of birds that nest on the islands. And it's also a great place if you just wanna come and relax and just kind of detach from the world for a day. There are very few people on the island, so you feel like you have the beach almost to yourself. Uh, it's very quiet, relaxing. All you hear is the sound of the waves. It's just a great little escape for a day. We really enjoyed our time here, and we hope you will as well. Um, basically, if you're into nature, history, or relaxation, this is a great park for you. If you're really into big crowds, lots of crazy, exciting things to do and cold weather, this is probably not the park for you. <laughs> Thanks for watching our experience at Dry Tortugas National Park. If you have any questions about our experience, you can leave a comment below this video and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss our national park and other outdoor adventure videos that we post about once a week. Have a great day guys. Bye bye.